Now that we have a basic overview of air chemistry, we can begin to apply that understanding to complex issues. Environmental problems have socioeconomic components as well as scientific. Ozone is the first pollutant problem we will study in depth. One confusing thing about ozone is that it is a nasty pollutant in the troposphere where we breathe it, but it is a critical component of the stratosphere where it blocks harmful UV light. A major focus of chemistry is how energy interacts with matter. Some elements exist in various forms called allotropes. These are molecules with different numbers of atoms. Allotropes of oxygen are all reactive, but diatomic oxygen, O2, is the most stable and therefore most abundant. That diatomic form is usually what people mean when they say oxygen. Atoms are composed of small atomic particles. This image represents an oxygen atom with eight protons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus and electrons are found outside the nucleus. Protons and neutrons have similar masses, while the mass of an electron is about 1800 times less than that of the proton. The mass of an atom is concentrated in the nucleus and the electrons are dispersed in the space outside the nucleus with negligible mass. Atoms are identified by their unique atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons and defines an atom. All oxygen atoms have eight protons and all carbon atoms have six protons. The mass number is the total mass of the atom, including the neutrons, which can vary in different atoms of the same element. The mass of electrons is so small compared to the protons and neutrons that the mass of electrons are not counted in determining the mass number. This slide uses carbon as an example. All carbon atoms have six protons and usually have six neutrons. With a total mass of 12 atomic mass units. An AMU is a relative unit of measurement, except it is really, really small. Carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14 are called isotopes. Most elements have isotopes. Isotopes have the same number of protons, which tells us what element they are, but a different number of neutrons. The definition of carbon is an atom with six protons. Likewise, an atom with eight protons is oxygen, and an atom with only one proton is hydrogen. Chlorine is another example. Chlorine always has 17 protons. That is the definition of chlorine, an atom with 17 protons. Most chlorine atoms have 19 neutrons, giving it a mass number of 35. But about 25% of chlorine atoms have 21 neutrons for a mass of 37. We call these isotopes of chlorine, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. With billions of atoms, the mass or atomic weight of an element is the average mass of the isotopes in the sample according to their relative abundance. This slide shows the calculation of the average atomic weight of chlorine, which is 35.45 atomic mass units. On Earth, the terms mass and weight are interchangeable.
Electrons move around very rapidly in space surrounding the nucleus. The nucleus has a positive charge because of the protons. Atoms usually have the same number of electrons as protons, so they do not have a net charge. But we will learn more about charged atoms, also called ions, later, because they are very important in chemistry. Reactivity generally depends on the electron configuration in the outer shell of the atom. That is the zone of interface when atoms come near each other. It is the electrons in the outer shell, the valence electrons, that have an opportunity to interact. The periodic table is arranged so that the groups have the same number of valence electrons. The halogens, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine, for example, all have seven valence electrons. This slide illustrates the relationship between elements, reactivity, and valence electron. Dr. Lewis was one of America's great chemists who helped describe this by using a dot to represent each valence electron. Of special note is group 8A, or group 18 in the newer version of the table. This group 8A is not reactive and is sometimes called the inert gases. Lewis observed that neon and argon have eight valence electrons, and Prose the octet rule has a hypothesis. Lewis's octet rule allows us to visualize the way that matter recognizes and reorganizes to form stable molecules by losing or gaining electrons. When atoms bond, they are trading or sharing electrons. It is key to remember that in chemistry we can observe and explain general patterns, but there are exceptions. Scientists get excited by the exceptions because understanding the exceptions can help explain the rule. Lewis structure can give us a hint of the shape of a molecule based on the general distribution of valence electrons in the molecule. For example, in each molecule of formaldehyde, two hydrogens contribute one valence electron each for a total of two. Carbon contributes four and oxygen contributes six for a total of 12 valence electrons to share between atoms as bonding or non-bonding electrons. A single bond always has two electrons and is represented by a straight line. Non-bonding electrons also occur in pairs. The sun is the earth's source of energy and sustains all life on Earth. Electromagnetic radiation, EMR, from the sun controls our climate, drives our weather systems, regulates the life cycles of all plant and animal species. Electromagnetic radiation interacts with atoms and molecules depending on how much energy it holds. Different kinds of matter interact with a specific amount or quanta of radiant energy. A quanta is a discrete quantity of energy. Chemists can calculate the quanta of energy by using the wavelength. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency and the lower the energy. Here we have focused on energy interacting with molecules. In this chapter on ozone and the next on climate change, we will focus on the region of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum called the ultraviolet, which is enough energy to break bonds. We will also focus on the infrared region 
which has only enough energy to make bonds vibrant. When we get sunburn, bonds are broken by the UV energy and skin cells die. Doctors call these lesions.